Hi guys, so I want to talk today about the ethereal essence. So uh, most people know about the ethereal essence and if you don't know what ethereal is, I would highly recommend reading Truth is Beauty. Uh, it's a blog and I'll link it down below and it's about the ethereal essence. She has a lot of material on it and I learned a lot about the ethereal essence from her. Um, but giving it some more thought of my own as well, I had realized that angelic is just a small part of the ethereal essence so there are some people who really look like angels kate blanchett is a great example of this in kibby's system she would be a dramatic but actually um that's not really her best look and again um i would recommend reading that blog that i linked below that talks about the ethereal essence and how kate blanchett really looks so much more stunning in these angelic looks than she does in what kibby would put her in which is a dramatic look so what is um what is the ethereal essence right ethereal in general is otherworldly and we have these figments of our imagination, right? And we collectively agree as a society that there are these certain beings, certain mythical creatures. There are angels, there are, um, there are aliens, there are fairies, there are wood nymphs, there are, um, you know, witches and, and, and things like that. And we kind of have these these stories that we collectively agree upon and we have an idea of what these beings would look like and when we see them in real life it's really really astounding to us to see someone who looks like an angel in real life or someone who looks like a fairy in real life and that's why i think it's so special and i absolutely love the ethereal essence and we sort of put it together with Anjanu saying, oh, well, you know, uh, Ethereal and Anjanu are something that is basically not Kibi. So um, they're both kind of similar in that they're not Kibi. I want to talk about how it's so different. So the Anjanu essence is very physical. It's a baby, right? So uh, if you watched, if you didn't watch my video on Anjanu and baby faceness, I would really hope that you watch it because what I'm about to say will make a lot more sense. But um, Basically, Anjanu is a very physical, very real thing. And so it, it's kind of, it's very much constricted to the physical world and there are certain qualities that will make you Anjanu and certain qualities that will make it such that you are not Anjanu. For example, it would look a bit strange if you dressed Anjanu but you had a Yang skeleton. And I gave an example of that in my Anjanu video. Um, but on the other hand, with Ethereal, it anything goes right we don't have examples of angels in real life but we have examples of babies in real life right we think to ourselves well this person is not a baby they're they're tall uh well this person is not a baby their eyes are small you know things like that right but you know with ethereal it could be anything and there are so many different archetypes that you could fall into and it's just completely different because it's not something that's tied to a physical characteristic of a certain subtype of people it's something that's in our imaginations and that's such a huge difference so um yeah let's just dive into it and start talking about it so what do i think about the sort of um the the lines and what makes the ethereal essence is there something that we can technically say makes the ethereal essence well i think we can technically say what makes the angelic essence and luckily again the woman uh, who writes the Truth and Beauty Truth is Beauty blog figured this out that it's actually this S shape, right? So angelic has this S shape, um, but also it looks a lot like uh, basically it's a the S shape is is a huge part of it. But at the same time, we also have people who look quite angelic who don't necessarily have the S shape. So there are a lot of other factors too that she also talks about. Um, such as low contrast and um, you know uh, the eyes being a certain way and things like that that are all uh, contributing to this angelic essence right but some examples of the angelic type are of course Kate Blanchett, Uma Thurman um, and okay I'm gonna get to Tilda Swinton because Tilda Swinton is very interesting and very special in my opinion 
And that brings me to my next point, is that angelic is just a small part of the overall ethereal essence that you know us humans can have so there could be other ethereal beings for example otherworldly beings such as aliens or fairies and so when we look at a picture of an alien we kind of well before we even looked at this picture right we kind of knew what an alien would look like and we kind of knew that it would have these types of eyes and we also know what an intimidating alien would look like, and it would look something like this. And now let me show you some images of people who are not necessarily, they're not necessarily angelic, but they are definitely ethereal, and you feel that about them when you look at their photos, but you can't necessarily place your finger on what it is about them that makes them ethereal, that makes them otherworldly. So we have Tyra Banks, and Tyra Banks is a really good example of someone who really seems like she is ethereal and otherworldly in some of her photos, but at the same time, she doesn't exactly fit into that S shape, that, um, that sort of uh, angelic type of look. It, it just doesn't really, it does, she doesn't fit with the rest of the angelic women. Um, and, but she does fit with some other people who look really similar. So for example, we also have Tilda Swinton, right? And Tilda Swinton, is you could say she looks like kind of a yang version of angelic right and i think that's valid that's a good way of describing it but i think also she looks a bit like an alien and you can't really say that about kate blanchett as much as you can say it about tilda swinton and i think that's completely amazing and i don't know if no one uh <laughs> If no one was like mentioning this because it's somehow offensive, I don't think it's offensive. I think it's completely awesome. And I just think that aliens are otherworldly and they are more advanced than us and more beautiful than us and more everything than us. And if they were ever to visit, we would find that they were way more intelligent and way better and way higher on a higher plane than us, right? So it's this extraterrestrial being, so to speak, extraterrestrial that is not, it's it's not an angel, it's an extraterrestrial being, right? So that is what Tilda Swinton, lo Swinton looks like to me. Um, so I think that's really cool. Uh, another woman who really looks like that, she looks <laughs> kind of jokingly, she kind of looks like she has some of those lines of an alien. Um, uh, her, she was she played Jessica Hyde and I'll insert her picture. She played Jessica Hyde in um, in this miniseries Utopia, but she has that exact same you notice some similarities right between these people. So they all have the smaller chin and they have pretty sharp bone structure, so definitely more yang and but also their eyes there's something about their eyes that's very unique in that it's kind of they are um, sometimes rounded sometimes slanted but combining those really large eyes with the angular bone structure starts to look a bit extraterrestrial a bit alien and i think that's so cool uh, there's another example and definitely last but not least teal swan and teal swan she looks so extraterrestrial and so interesting and she definitely rocks it all the time because she <laughs> she's a she's a spiritual teacher right so she always has to wear the flowy stuff and whatever and she rocks that look so well and she just always looks extraterrestrial but she does look intimidating and in kitty's system she is a dramatic and uh, this is what, again, the blog below that I linked touches on as well, is that the more intimidating ethereal essence is a bit more yang, right? And the one that is more calming, uh, etc., is more yin, like Kate Blanchett. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also super interesting. But I do think that in the, the sort, there are there is some aspect of it that is yin and yang, but then there's also some aspect of it that is simply the archetypes that we can't necessarily, um, it's just a coincidence that we attribute really yang bone structure with round eyes, for example, as alien-like, 
And if we didn't attribute that to that archetype of the alien, then we wouldn't find those people with that bone structure and the large eyes to be very ethereal looking. Does that make sense? So um, I think that it's the archetype that comes first and it's just a coincidence what we chose to uh, somehow grab onto as a collective, you know, that, oh, aliens have large eyes. Like, why do they have large eyes, you know? Um, it's kind of weird it's kind of random but now it has stuck in our minds and so we think large eyes really angular bones oh like and a small chin well that's a bit alien like and it's really cool it looks very cool so this video is getting super 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 long um what do you guys think what do you think of the ethereal essence you know is it is it a thing do you believe in it do you like it do you hate it um you know, yeah, so let me know what you think on that. And in my next video, I am going to talk about other ethereal essences. So essences such as a fairy or a wood nymph. There's this mother nature type of essence that's kind of the wood nymph type that is more like, think Lana Del Rey. She's very ethereal, but she's not necessarily angelic, so to speak. She's more naturally. How about Bryce Dallas Howard? She's... Okay, now I'm starting to talk about it. So... I'm gonna stop here. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. <laughs>